Welcome to a very special episode of the Fuzz Club. This is our April Fools episode, and we are talking about the infamous, the one and only Barbara Marquet. And if you don't know who Barbara Marquet is, no one else does either. But it's one of those albums that I have shared multiple times on Real or Fuzz. And she has some interesting song titles, and we're going to listen to those songs. And uh, we're going to get into it a little bit. This is an idea that we, we've kind of tossed around for a long time, playing some of the music from those ridiculous album covers that we've shared. And now we're finally getting to dig into it. So here's the, the first of hopefully many. Uh, Barbara Marquet. What's up, everybody? What's going on, Ryan? Hey. Uh, we have a small group here, but we can go around and do some intros if you if you want. Eddie? I'm Eddie from the Lords of Opium Church and the Endless. Luke? I'm a professional podcast hijacker. Uh, I promise not to bring up Sturgill Simpson this week. (laughs) And I'm Pat from Monster Riff. All right. Now, to the fun stuff. The first album that we're going to talk about is called It's All Right to Fuck All Night. And this is one of those that I've shared on Real or Fuzzed a few times, as I mentioned. And people do get this wrong. They think it's made up. They think it's fake. And it's very real, as we're about to find out. Um, so before we dive in a little bit, let's get a little background on Barbara Marquet. And I'm just going to read right from her Wikipedia page because she has an interesting little story here. She's an American musician, born and raised in New York. She was educated in piano and violin at Juilliard and the Manhattan School of Music. Graduated from Juilliard with a bachelor's degree in composition. She later formed a five-part female singing group called the Girl Scouts, and later a musical theater troupe called Little Lulu and the Humpers, uh, which may be a little foreshadowing to her future music endeavors. But with her own band, she gained some commercial success in Europe with several singles in the top 20 charts. Two of the singles... It's All Right to Fuck All Night and Give Your Dick to Me (laughs) were heavily censored before receiving airplay. In the U.S., she collaborated in uh, various musical projects, including Carly Simon's Coming Around Again, Michael Jackson's Bad Video, and a backup singer for Bruce Willis. Since 1994, she has been writing her own music in the world music and new age genres. Um. I, I wasn't really able to find anything about what her work was with Michael Jackson, Carly Simon, or Bruce Willis, but interesting nonetheless. I think I need to track down this Bruce Willis album, and we need to have a battle with him and David Hasselhoff. Yeah, there are a few celebrities that have albums. Uh, I just recently found out that Macho Man Randy Savage has an album. Oh, you're kidding me, brother. Yeah, awesome. Oh yeah. <laughs> I kind of remember Bruce Willis making music though. Is He's like else? a jazz musician. I don't. Oh. Yeah. I, now um, that you say that, it makes sense. Some, yeah, something like that. Like it was like semi legit almost. I think. Yeah. Um, Eddie Murphy. He had that one song, right? Didn't he do a. Yeah. <laughs> song about partying. <laughs> song about partying, right? Yeah, and then I was going to bring up some stuff that'll probably get us kicked off YouTube, so I won't. Um, well, <laughs> I don't uh, know how much how how much worse it gets than uh, give your dick to me and it's all right to fuck all night. But yeah, that's, a it's your call. that's your call. So what do you think she's doing with that um, action figure? I didn't even realize it was an action oh, figure. So I've spent it for a long that? time. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense at all. Yeah. I have no idea. It lo- like it looks like she's at a party. Are those like streamers behind her? But she might be in like a bathroom because there's tile. <laughs> And then she's holding a children's <laughs> toy. Like a, it's a, a group shower at the YMCA. <laughs> that toy's from the Lost and Found. Anything with a children's toy and then talking about fucking all night makes me uneasy. I think she would have found a lot more success if she would have been from this day and age. Perhaps an OnlyFans and a SoundCloud co- collab. Like, that's yeah, the, that's the other thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play this music real quick so people can hear it that are, are watching this or listening to it. But, like, especially the, given the time period, like, this was released in 1980. I didn't think people like, thought like this in the 80s. Exactly. Like, funny music didn't exist, really, did it? I mean, like, 
offensive, vulgar, mm-hmm. funny music. Like we're not talking about like Lil Dicky here. Like this is like a woman. It's like pop music. It's it's being released. There is no like out, there is no internet. It's just very surprising to me that it would be made and then put like out like a legit yeah, it's, it's first it's You Shit. know, I I've been reading this book on um twenty uh 20 songs that have like topped the charts and like helped change the course of music. And one of the first she chapters... was number five. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah, right. It's um, all right to fuck all night. Is, she, all night. So the first, the first song they talk about is the twist and about like the sexual overtones that were prevalent in music from like the fifties and sixties, but like would chart, but like, because it was just called the twist and it was like about dancing, you kind of lost it. So like the sex in music has always been there. It's sure. just like crazy to see it suddenly this overt without any sort of like transition. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, eighties music was was definitely as every you know generation is, but there was a lot of like sexual stuff in the eighties and Madonna and all that kind of stuff. But mm-hmm. this is just so blatant <laughs> that it's, <laughs> it's shocking to me. Anyway, yes. before before we get too in the weeds, let's uh, let's listen to this thing here. So this is It's All Right to Fuck All Night. My favorite part. <laughs> We've officially made it farther than I did. <laughs> I think this basically continues for the next like three minutes, four minutes, something like that. To me, this sounds like. Um, something like if there was a beat in the car and it was especially a, a song like my wife like i would just change the words to whatever beat right now. it's like um it's like the music in the background would be like at a six flags commercial or something but then she's talking <laughs> about trucking and fucking just constantly yes that's all i i mean if she found success i think i could i could honestly be a songwriter at this point <laughs> <laughs> did you did you play it right from the beginning um, I I don't know that I did I, I I don't I still don't fully know how this uh, this platform works and when I play it it seems to start from a different spot so it, it might not have because I think I think it opens like my wife turned it on today because I was like you gotta hear this and I think it it starts off with her going it's all right to fuck all I think that's like the yeah. very opening <laughs> it, it is yeah it is so uh, let me just read some of the lyrics if if no one caught them. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's all right to fuck all night and it's okay to suck all day is the opening. And then she says that about uh, 20 times. And she <laughs> says, fuck, fuck. Oh, baby. Now suck, suck. Do a fuck, fuck. Oh, baby. Now suck, suck. Uh, then there's a nana nana in there somewhere. Uh, it's done when you stop all this purity job because they are dead and we are alive. Yeah. It's all right to fuck all night. Somebody's got okay. daddy all day. for sure. And then <laughs> towards the end, it says, did you come? Did you come? Did you come good? Did you come good? Did you come? Did you come? Did you come? Come, come. Was it fun? Was it fun? Was it fun, fun, fun? Did you come? Did you come? <laughs> did you come, come, come? Okay. Um, <laughs> Oh, I'm going to feel so bad in like 20 years when somebody Googles come and then this video pops up and I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> this also says America, all of the passengers, come, come, don't you know? I don't really know what that one means, actually. And then she wraps it up with saying it's all right to fuck all night and it's okay to suck all day. 
I wonder if Chat GTP didn't write this. You know? Yeah, like, maybe it's maybe in... one of those things like um, Sinbad in the Genie movie where it didn't actually exist. Maybe this is just one of the people's memories and uh, Chat GPT just created it recently. Wait, that movie didn't exist? No, it was Shaq, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shazam. Yeah. People keep Shazam. saying that there's a, there's a Kazam and it's Sinbad. Oh, yeah, no, it, it is Kazam. I'm sorry. Shazam's the new superhero movie. Uh, yeah, yeah. I remember watching that. I think I even had the t shirt. <laughs> it's crazy like the influences in that song because like it starts off like sort of like jamaican and mm-hmm. then there's this really strong like spanish horn vibe in the second and some, some whistles in there too well, that's what you learn at juilliard i'm pretty sure uh, that that was gonna be my next point was that isn't it amazing that she has a degree in composition and like a musical background in violin and piano went to juilliard uh, the Manhattan School of Music, and this this is what she came up with. And I'm not trying to like, <laughs> you know, um, tear her down or anything because I love it, but uh, it's just surprising. Do and, you have anything from uh, her other band, the something something and the Humpers? Uh, Little Lulu and the Humpers was uh, not music. I don't believe a musical. Uh, what was it theater? Oh, okay, it was, something theater. I, that also might be a site from Brazzers, but I wouldn't know. <laughs> Little Lulu and the Humpers was a musical theater troupe. Yeah. 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 You can like, we, we were talking before the show about like how, uh, how, how far she's dug into like world music and like sort of tribal stuff now. And you can, you can sort of hear that diversity uh, in here. Yeah. I mean a, a lot. And if you listen to her later stuff, like I, I, I was going to bring up that, in 2005 is her latest music called the Shambhala dance. It's like very tribal and stuff. And it, it seems very different than this, but only, only lyrically <laughs> really. Eddie, are you going to like try to cover this on your new uh, instruments? I think I you'd be pretty good at it. I think the, the guitar solo uh, you, you can hear in there sound pretty cool on the oud. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, I was listening to this. Like, <laughs> Like trying to get the get some background out. The gym was packed. I had the headphones on, listen to this. I was like, was too much. I was like dying laughing, <laughs> <laughs> hearing a bunch of whistles and shit. <laughs> so this, I wanted to bring this photo up. I, it, it, she kind of started as like, I mean, clearly, but as like a comedy thing. So she was wow. aware. She was aware yeah. that it was funny. It wasn't like she was playing this music, being like trying to be Madonna, you know what I mean? Like, she wasn't trying to be, like, sexual necessarily. It was, like, a funny sexual. Um, because this was, like, the back of her first album called Hotbox. Um, bodaciously funny. A cross between Carly Simon and Lenny Bruce. Uh, outrageously fun. A true below-the-belt hit. Uh, um, unfortunately, Sorry. this didn't have the, the track listing, and I, I, I wish that I would have discovered this earlier, but I just found the track listing for this Hotbox album. Uh, track one, Eat Me. <laughs> track two is All Right to Fuck All Night, which we know. Um, Huey's Bar, Vibrator Blues, Hot Chocolate Cock, uh, Sesame Snatch, Glass Ass. Uh, this one says Give Your Flesh to Me, and I've seen some, some differences. Some say flesh and some say dick, so I'm not sure what that's about. Give Your Flesh to Me. Whorehouse Blues, Lesbian's Lament, and John Denver meets Cher. So, is she uh, the original Steel Panther? <laughs> yeah, I guess. Uh, the style says comedy, erotic, and disco, which is a, a fairly good description. But I kind of want to hear Hot Chocolate Cock. We might have to have a follow up <laughs> episode. <laughs> I, I kind of get like a, a Ween vibe from, from all this. Not that they're erotic at all, but with their musicianship and just like. Outside the box kind of style. Ween, um, you said? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Something you wouldn't expect. So let me go back to this other track. This one says, Give Your Dick to Me. Um, <laughs> while I that think this one's said, better, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Uh, the track listing said, Give Your Flesh to Me. So I'm not sure what's up, what's up with that. But this one is Give Your Dick to Me, apparently on the same album. And uh, a very influential hit, as we, we all know.
Give it to me. Give it to me. I'm being very tribal. I wish somebody would cut Adele over the hello part. <laughs> or Lionel Richie. Give it to me. All right. Here we go. <laughs> There was Give Your Dick to Me, which I do think is the superior song, if I have Thanks. to pick one. <laughs> so let me read some of those lyrics, because they're, they're possibly even funnier than the last one. <clears throat> you can give your clothes to the laundry. You can give your head to your cook. You can give your love to your mother. And baby, that ain't no joke. You can give your heart to your music. And if you ain't too blind to see that you sure know how to use it, baby, you can give your dick to me. Repeated that, repeated that for a while. <laughs> she says, I'm better than a machine. I'm better than a machine. I'm better than a machine. Yeah, Here's but, but 1980 hard. standards. I mean, have you seen what's out there now? <laughs> <laughs> when you're just a middle-aged musician, you may think this is all a big bore, but when you're doing all them positions, baby, I you open my pores. Better hurry up or you'll lose it. Ten more years, you'll be 103. I don't know what the fuck that means. <laughs> Uh, be sure you know how to use it, so give your dick to me. <laughs> hey, man, get your shit together. Don't you know that you've got such a beautiful thing? And hey, man, I'm not into leather. All I want is to kiss you nice. I want your ring. Oh, take off your pants. Take off your shirt. Take off your shoes. Take off my skirt. Hey, man, give your dick to me. <laughs> You can give your brains to science. You can give your liver to the zoo. <laughs> you can use your ass like an appliance. Polish it up like new. <laughs> oh, man, it's so good. I, she closes the song by saying, I want your little Richard. <laughs> oh, I, I took a turn. <laughs> I, uh, while we were listening to that, I did try to look up um, hot chocolate cock. Uh, it could have just been because I'm on YouTube, but I could not find a single <laughs> shroud of evidence that that existed. Oh. <laughs> I want to say something, but I'm not going to. Won't be received well. Um, yeah, possibly. <laughs> yeah, we won't. We'll talk later. <laughs> I, I'm too scared to, to Google hot chocolate cock on the computer. <laughs> Do you got the safe oh, I I'm not. <laughs> I'm not Googling that again. <laughs> I won't do that again. Although, like, Vibrator Blues, Eat Me, there's some really good ones on here. I'm, I'm, my, my interest in Barbara is even more peaked now than ever, I think. And I was super excited to do this episode. These speaking seem to be of, the only two that are readily available everywhere for some reason. Speaking of vibrating blues, have you guys ever seen that um, like TikTok video of the guy playing uh, Wipeout with um, vibrator yes. on the guitar? Yeah, I've seen that. 
Really? No. I, I saw a guy playing with a drill a couple times. It's pretty um, fucking dope. I, I <laughs> awesome. That's going to be the next thing for the podcast is bringing up videos. I, I haven't quite figured out how to make that sound. I, I felt stupid saying that. I'm like, I should have loaded this up, but here, let me show my phone to you over the yeah. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so, anyway, here, there's Barbara McKay. Here's here's hoping that she sees this and responds and comes on to part two. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. We I would love all that. the hot box together. Did you you invited her? Yeah, but no response. I, I really did invite her. Um, it wasn't to be cruel and and make fun of her or anything. I, I sincerely wanted to hear her her take on all of, all of. It would be people. interesting. Yeah, I mean, realistically, like, she's kind of a um, a pioneer. I I would say I don't know. I wasn't yeah. around then, but. I don't know what else was coming out like this at the time. Um, it obviously wasn't like huge. It didn't blow up or anything, but it, um, you know, it is kind of pioneering. And obviously her music is very different now and she doesn't bring this up. She doesn't like to uh, celebrate it too much, but I offered uh, a, a, a spot here on the podcast if she wanted to come and talk about these two. And now that I know that Hotbox, the album exists, I welcome it even more. I think we wanted to cover this. See if Blake wants to join in, and for, if she wants to come on the next podcast, we we'll like to cover something for her. <laughs> yeah, I would. I would love a, a like a heavier version because yeah. I don't enjoy the uh, yeah. disco, tribal, whatever music in the background as much. But maybe like a rock version. Uh, it doesn't even have to be metal or anything. It doesn't have to. She be could lean anything. into it. It would be good. Yeah, I think it's about I mean, time for a comeback these days. I think the the world would be ready for her finally. Mm-hmm. Like she could team up with like uh, Wheeler Walker Jr. There you go. Or, uh, yeah, I mean, ween anybody so, really. This does say that, um, when she moved to LA, she performed with Bruce Willis singing back up for his blues group called the Accelerators. Cool, cool. I really gotta track this shit down. It's probably horrible if I had to guess, but it's probably not great. I wasn't really able to find much about her time with, um, Michael Jackson, wasn't it? And anything else like that. She, uh, she, she performed at Rikers Island Women's Prison, and she, oh. she played the tunes "Vibrator Blues" and "Women in Jail." That is uh, her Folsom Prison moment. Yeah, which incited inmates to rush the stage, <laughs> and, and guards to draw weapons. <laughs> Although a full-scale riot was narrowly avoided, Marquet continued to write humorously risque material for her next group, Little Lulu and the Humpers. Their show, a rock musical review, was sold out for two shows each night for two months in Miami Beach, Florida. That fits. Uh, I did find. Go, sorry. Go oh, um, I was gonna. Uh, I did find out what she did with Michael Jackson. Okay. Uh, she took on various musical jobs, including handling synthesizer programming on Carly mm-hmm. Simon's "Coming Around Again" album, assisting Leonard or Leon Pendarvis on synthesizer programming for Michael Jackson's bad video in 1987 in writing arrangements for Saturday night live and serving as a backup singer for Bruce Willis, as you mentioned, uh, during the actress fling with music. Hmm. So a lot of synth. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty impressive. First thing she got. Yeah. After she returned to New York city, she met her meditation teacher in 1985, which is five years after this kind of music was released. And it completely changed her personal and musical path. So that explains a lot while she, uh, why she doesn't talk about this and her music sounds slightly different lyrically. She would, yeah, she would do really well today. She's mm-hmm. like, um, she's like, if like cupcake, I don't know if you guys know cupcake, like cupcake tried to be like presidents of the United States or something. It's just like really goofy and fun and off the wall. Yeah, I'm. I'm curious to. to I mean, it, it does say that she had some like hits in Europe around like this time, like this this stuff. So I'm just curious to to know like how it was received. If it if it was did, looked at as like strange or just ama- awesome, you know, did people think it was hilarious? Well, did you time? see like the neutered videos on YouTube where it's basically "It's All Right" is the name of the song, and she just cuts out all the the fun yeah. shit. Yeah, I know there was like censored versions of it and stuff. Maybe that's what it was. Maybe people didn't even know. I, I believe it was like pretty heavily censored in Europe. Okay, and then... that makes sense. Well, 
Here's to you, Barbara Marquet. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Uh, what else? Three beers wasn't enough, so I'm going to get another. Okay. Or two. All right, that's that. <laughs> that's our <laughs> April Fool's episode. <laughs> Barbara McKay, please come on the episode. Please come, come on the on. episode. Please make another album, Hot Box Part 2. Um, let me hear Hot Chocolate Cock as soon as you can <laughs> send it to me. <laughs> anyway, um, we'll go around and you can plug whatever you're up to. Eddie? Um, the only thing I got happening right now is uh, the analyst is going to a studio pretty soon here in the next like this summer sometime and i'm still working on my own stuff awesome luke what are you up to <laughs> not, not a fucking thing no more kids <laughs> though <laughs> old boy's done no more no more kids i'm done dude <laughs> did, you get, did you get snipped not yet but it's oh. in the works oh, yeah, wow. i need, need to you figure that schedule. out too, i think i guess i probably should have said that i probably just shakes myself so there we go <laughs> congrats on your next kid yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Pat. <laughs> yeah. uh, All right, Pat, what are you up to? Uh you know, just doing the thing over at Monster Riff. So um you know, come get your reviews and hopefully uh I'll have some like other content out soon and we'll break out of the review mold for a week or two. Cool. That's about it. Awesome. All right, everybody go check out Barbara Marquet's greatest hits and we'll catch you on the next Fuzz Club. Later. See you guys. See you guys.